So let's take a look at the drop comparison of 7 millimeter bullets between 162 and 168 grains. Uh, we're using 3,000 feet per second as a constant. Uh, that's going to be kind of control so that we can just compare the, the relationship of these bullets in ballistic coefficient terms and how well they're going to maintain their velocity, maintain a flat trajectory, and beat the wind. So on the left side, you can see that we're looking at bullet drop in terms of minutes of angle. That's how much drop you're going to encounter, and that's how much you would uh, index on your scope for a correction value if you're using minutes of angle. And then on the bottom, we can see that as you move to the right, that's uh, your distance in meters all the way out to 15 hundred meters so we're gonna look at uh, the differences between how these different bullets perform and you can tell by the legend here that we have different colors for the different bullets and uh, they're labeled accordingly the hornady bullets are in red the burger is in uh, the orange or yellow uh, the nozzle is in black and the elko is in white kind of representative of their packaging so the first bullet we have on the top of the legend here is the hornady 162 grain eldx this is kind of the new bullet that's replacing the amax as we discussed briefly before the AMAX, they discovered uh, the engineers at Hornady are trying to figure out why the, the ballistic coefficient seemed to decompose uh, with the polymer tip bullets. And they couldn't account for it until they started really looking closely at their data. And uh, they concluded that polymer tip design bullets in any manufacturer, not just Hornady, they ended up testing all the different manufacturers. And uh, they're, o they're only engineered to encounter maybe 400 degrees. And a bullet will encounter maybe twice that temperature when you're talking about frictional heating. Uh, as the bullet's rubbing through the air at uh, a couple times the speed of sound, it does get pretty hot. Plenty hot enough to deform or melt the tips of those bullets, which can, uh, after a couple hundred yards, you'll notice this, uh, it can actually significantly impact the trajectory in a negative way. So they redesigned the materials being used in the tips and they come out with the ELD series. Uh, some guys are grouchy. I actually do like the Amaxes. And as you can tell on the chart here, the two different red colors are relatively close together. You're going to have a little over uh, 60 minutes of angle of drop at 1500 meters. So they're very comparative. The old Amaxes actually did a little bit better. Uh, on this plot out, this is using JBM ballistics, assuming the uh, ballistic coefficient did not degrade at that distance, which it probably would a little bit. So you're going to have a very similar trajectory, but it's going to be a more consistent ballistic coefficient. It's not going to change as you uh, encounter frictional heating downrange. So it'll be a more consistent bullet. This is supposed to be quite a bit better. Another major improvement of the Hornady ELDX is that it's actually configured for penetration. Uh, these things are built a little bit better than the Emaxes in terms of bullet weight retention. They got a kind of a thick shank in the jacket and a high interlock ring to keep the core and jacket together, providing maybe 50 to 60% of weight retention. Um, so even at low velocity, you're going to still have a decent expansion rate and they'll hold together at higher velocities. So this is going to be uh, vastly superior to the, the AMAX design, which was purely more of a target bullet and uh, maybe had inadequate performance on game. So if you're target shooting, the AMAXs still work fine, uh, but the ELDX is actually quite an improvement and will be totally fine for hunting applications as well. So the ELDX made by Hornady is going to be a great bullet. Actually, the AMAXs, which I've used forever, I've seen some incredible things done with those. And uh, that's some of my record shooting that I done was with Amax is long before I filmed anything. And I wish I would have filmed some of it. That would have been uh, even better than some of the other shots I've been caught on camera, you know. But uh, I do like the Amax still, but the ELD is superior. You can look for comparative purposes here. The burger is uh, right between those two in terms of uh, your external performance. And when you're talking about the same exact muzzle velocity and uh, the 168 grain hunting VLDs actually are very comparative to both of those as well. And the Burger is very well renowned for its high quality control. They're a top notch bullet. Uh, that's what a lot of your professional shooters are gonna be using for winning competitions and things like that. And the hunting VLD, uh, VLD means very low drag, but the hunting version of the VLD is going to be configured again for better performance when you're talking terminal ballistics. So that's still a decent bullet for hunting. If you're shooting deer at long range, that's a great bullet to use as well. A lot of guys uh, do kind of opt for the burgers. But as you can see here, the heavier 168 grain burger is pretty comparable to the 162 uh, Hornady Amax and the ELDs. So they're all in the same general ballpark externally. If you look at the Nosler 162 grain AccuBond long range SBT, you do have a little bit better ballistic coefficient on this bullet. It's just going to result in a significantly 
higher impact at the same velocity. Uh, you're going to have to adjust a little bit less on your scope. Uh, so that's going to be advantageous for uh, hunting when you uh, need a little bit of forgiveness when you're making a hasty firing solution. If you misjudge your range a little bit, uh, it will be a flatter shooting bullet by a little bit just because it has a, a slightly better ballistic coefficient. And of course, the Aki Bond is kind of one of the standards for excellent terminal ballistic performance when you're talking about hunting applications. I do kind of like nozzlers for long range hunting. They've always done a good job with their bullet construction as far as uh, expansion and controlled expansion. They are a little more pricey. They're a premium priced bullet. So if you can afford to shoot these, uh, that's not a bad way to go either. If you're looking for absolute maximum external ballistic potential for extreme long range shooting uh, and you want to spend a little bit more money, you can get the Elko. It will cost you a bit more money to buy these bullets. They do have a premium price tag, uh, but they're still quite manageable price. A hundred of them, I think, is 80 some dollars which is actually not that bad when you compare the ballistic advantages, if that's your application of fire, is an extreme stupid long range, like shooting way farther than you probably should. Uh, the 168 grain has an incredible ballistic coefficient, and here you can see that it has significantly less drop at 1,500 meters, 10 minutes of angle less drop. So this is kind of outside the pack uh, when you compare it to these other bullets in the same weight ranges. So if you're looking for maximum external ballistic potential and uh, to maximize your hit probabilities at extreme distances, the Elko is an extremely good way to go. And you're going to see similar results with the wind drift calculations. Now this is in inches. Not everyone uses minutes of angle for adjustment and this will uh, be a less linear chart so you can see uh, the actual effects of the wind drift on the bullet in terms of a distance rather than an angular measurement. Uh, so we're looking at the range out to 1500 meters again. And as you can see, we have a similar story. Your Hornady bullets and your Burger bullets are all uh, going to be affected about the same uh, by the wind. Your Nosler is going to have a little bit better performance, this particular uh, Acubon LR SBT. And your Elko is going to have significantly improved wind drift resistance. As you can see here, it's on the order of 50 inches less wind drift at these distances and wind drift is really what's going to hose you if you're going to be shooting at extreme long distances that is the most difficult part to adjust for so you need all the help you can get when you talk about wind drift so that's a good comparison of just an example of seven millimeter bullets in that weight range